being in hard times in the moment. And I kind of just went through this. In the moment, it feels like it'll never go away. Of course. But I've been fortunate enough to always come out on the other side. Now I can more quickly remind myself like, oh, that was a, that was a lesson. What was the lesson? that came from this. This is Daryl Sabara. He's been acting in big name movies and TV shows since he was a literal baby. Since then, you may have seen him in the Spy Kids franchise or alongside Robin Williams in World's Greatest Dad or on Will and Grace, Friends, Weeds. This guy's been all over. We covered so much ground in this conversation from his various attempts at biohacking to his life as a young actor in Hollywood and even the trials and tribulations of his dating life, all of which culminated in him meeting and marrying his lovely rock star wife the one and only Megan Trainer. Hope you enjoy it. Let's jump right in. What was the moment that you realized you may have had an obsession with biohacking that it was becoming unhealthy? Um, uh, I, I came to a point where I, I think I was called out for being a flip flopper. One Ooh. of my brother in laws were like, "You're such a flip flopper." On plans, politics? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not on politics, but uh, on on like, there's so many. There's so like such an output of information mm -hmm. and um growing up i had like being a child actor um there was a point in time where i was basically like told at a really young age hey if you don't like lose weight uh then we might have to recast you mm. and so that was like that's a, hard to hear that was hard to hear and that was said directly to you um, you know, it's hard cause I was like, I was so young, but like, from what I remember, it was like written in an email. Oh. Um, and so, and like now just being older and, and throughout my experience, it's like hard to be like, was that real? Was that not real? But n what was real is I was put on a diet at a really young age and, uh, like told to work out vigorously and, um, that like put something in my brain I don't know if it was like body dysmorphia or, or, or what, but it was just like that. I wasn't good enough. Mm. And, um, so I was all, so then, and also I think this goes with puberty, like the comparison started where it was mm. like, well, like that guy looks like that. I should look like that. Mm -hmm. And like, how do I look like that? Oh, br this is what Brad Pitt did to look like yeah, he did Troy, in Fight Club. Yeah. Like let's do that. Yep. Um, and so that went on for at least a decade. Um, and then like, so, so basically it's like, I wanted to lose weight. So I started the paleo diet in like 2012 before it was a, a fad and I found it. And, and that was probably the best I ever felt. Cause I was just eating whole foods. Sure. Um, and it was before like the whole foods market, like had a section that was like paleo snacks and like everything was put in packages. So, um, yeah, my relationship with food was just never really good. Um, up until like recently, like being becoming a dad and having a a son, like when you start feeding a baby, you kind of think about things differently, and you're giving them whole foods. You, I want him to have the best sure. whole ingredients, and then it just makes me think like, oh, what am I putting in my body? And <laughs> and also like, um, like emotionally eating. You know, it's like after a you know a tough day at the dad office, you know, like I'm going to a, a chocolate bar and like going like, oh, wow, it feels really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how we started talking about this. Well, we started talking about it because the, the flip-flopping of the, the, flip -flopping. The, the different fad diets, it sounds like. Yeah. Maybe yo-yo dieting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, totally. I did that a lot. Um, being like being an actor, like it feels like it's all about your image mm -hmm. um, and what you look like. And I think a lot of that was just like what I went through as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, just like, I just want to be healthy and especially like being a dad, like I just want to, um, you know, be as strong as I can and, and have as much energy as I can, uh, for as long as I can. Um, but like, as soon as I turned 30, I started, you know, just doing mundane tasks, like just holding my son or like, you know, like going to reach something and like, boom, my back is out. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? How, <laughs> how did that happen? I didn't do yeah. anything. And next thing I know, I'm on the floor just like gasping for air. So like, what do I do to, to not have that happen? Got it. <laughs> okay. So you, you want to maintain the level of fitness, flexibility, strength. Yeah. Maybe injury prevention thrown in there yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a pretty much a universal thing that people want. So it's not right? unusual. Okay. Um, 
Uh, it's funny, the story that you described to me about constantly seeking the next best thing or hyper optimization mm -hmm. is something that I think is heavily infused in culture nowadays. Yeah. And it's something that on my YouTube channel, I actually strive to debunk, mm -hmm. even though it goes against my commercial success. Right. Because if I make YouTube videos saying, here's the next best thing, or here's the supplement that's gonna cure everything for you. I can monetize that. I can right. sell it. That'll get monster views because people want that information. They yeah. crave it because it's preying almost on your insecurities and what you want. And they want the quick fix. And see, that's of what course. I that's what I had to, you know, I think becoming a dad helped me realize like, oh, like I don't need a, a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Like I can take my time. And it doesn't exist. It doesn't really exist. Yeah, it's like the fountain of youth. Yeah. Ponce de Leon After a while, I was like, you know what? Butter coffee is gross. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm fucking done. Let's I'm fucking go. done getting okay. my fingers all geeky. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> and, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And uh, interestingly enough, when I started the YouTube channel, I started the channel with Dan here. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we talked about was how he even with his family, remember that, Dan, that you would constantly be switching different diets and telling your family one thing about yeah. this thing is unhealthy and then the next week you're doing something different. So this is a universal thing. Yeah. And what I try and tell people is we know a lot in science, mm -hmm. but in reality, if you put it into this grand scheme of things, it's nothing. Yeah. So like the few things that we know we should celebrate, yeah. but then not pretend that we have all the answers. Yeah. Because that false confidence and bravado I think is really dangerous for anxiety. Totally. Because then we think we're doing something bad if we're not doing it. Yeah. And that's the other side of the coin, which I think you touched on, right? That you weren't living your best self or that you might lose a role or that you might not be there for Riley, mm -hmm. right? That's like the natural human instinct. Totally. Because we're a little survivalist as animals. Yeah. <laughs> But what's uh, now you're kind of into the wellness space as well. You have a few things you're doing. Tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, well, meditation is huge for mm -hmm. me. Um, what does meditation mean to you? Because I've seen many different forms of meditation. Totally. Um, it's evolved mm -hmm. over the years. Um, I basically, I started in 2014. Um, I was always interested as like a teenager mm -hmm. um, about getting into meditation, but I didn't know really what it was. How do you pique your interest in meditation as a teenager? That's so interesting. I don't, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was just like, it, I think the calmness around, around it, mm -hmm. or even just like around the visualizations of Like the what? control in it amidst the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I was always open to it. I didn't know what it was, but I always just knew that it was going to be a part of my life in some way. And I, uh, lived out here in New York in 2014. I did a play out here off Broadway and the play was, um, like a really heavy subject matter and it was, it was really dark mm. and I wasn't sleeping at night and was showing up to rehearsal like exhausted and i overheard uh one of the actors and the playwright talking about meditation and i kind of just like walked over there and was like hey guys like <laughs> i'm kind of struggling Do, can one of you like help me get into a practice because i think maybe that might help and uh the playwright his name was scott burns he was like transcendental meditation you should learn it do it and the actor, his name is Michael O'Keefe. He was like a monk in his Past lifetime. Okay. And he was like, you know what? Transcendental med meditation is great. Um, let's just talk. And uh, I know a lot about meditation and, and let's just talk and, and we'll figure out the right practice for you because you're just beginning, which like I love that because I always feel like I'm just beginning. So he got me into basic mindfulness and uh, I did my first meditation in 2014. This guy, Shinzen Young, um, I called in. It was like a phone number I dialed in. It was like a worldwide number. People from all over the world called in to do this group meditation. Um, and I just got so relaxed. I think I fell asleep. I was wow. like in and out of consciousness, just like asleep, awake, not really knowing, you know, could feel my body, couldn't feel my body. It was kind of like just what I needed at, at the right time. Um, and just started to practice basic mindfulness. I came back to Los Angeles and I think right around that time, the Headspace app like came out mm -hmm. 
And so I got really involved in, in the app and did the 30 day challenge. And within those 30 days, I think like one time I felt like I was like looking out of my third eye. Wow. And yeah. Just okay. like had some cool experiences, but uh, like nevertheless just felt more calm and more in control mm -hmm. of my emotions and my feelings and um, just had like, it was like this ease. It was like someone's just like holding my shoulders down. Cause I feel like I'm always kind of like tight, tight. Yeah. yeah. And like, I have to remind myself like, Oh, just relax. Um, and then just like years of, of kind of just like doing apps, doing the calm app and doing the 10% happier mm -hmm. app and doing yeah. the headspace app and, and really enjoying that. And then, um, one day, um, my wife and I, we were uh, getting ready to get married and we had, um, a trainer we were trying to like get fit together um and the trainer came in one day and he just seemed different there was something about him he was always a really happy guy but this day it was like he floated into our little gym session and and there was just like this lightness about him and i always used to walk him back to his car after our sessions and i was like dude what's going on with you something's <laughs> different from last week like what happened and he was like i just learned transcendental meditation um if you'd like to learn, like I can pass along my teacher's number and, and, um, she was great and it was amazing. And, and so then I learned like a couple months later and I kind of feel like there is a shift of my life pre TM and post TM. Wow. So eventually transcendental meditation found its way to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and that meditation is just 20 minutes twice a day sitting in as much silence as you can find. And, and, um, and yeah, so that's my, that's meditation to me is, uh, silence. It's In a world where silence is becoming more and more rare. Yeah. Especially as a father of one. Yeah. Upcoming father I'm a, of two. I'm a, I'm a, yes, I'm a 5 a.m. club guy. Oh. Like I'm up 5 a.m. because that's when it's quiet at home. <laughs> and I have that like hour to myself most of the time. Well, you have Sometimes, your morning routine. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I get up at five it's um it's quiet and um i really just like dedicate that time for myself before the day starts so then i can be my best self for everyone else wow. throughout the day that's really cool because i'm always passionate to hear how people come across meditation yeah and really try to understand it from a, a science standpoint what's happening in the brain that mm -hmm. this is working really well and i mean my mind is going off Throughout my meditation. Yeah, and Some that's, days that's it's the thing. Just, People think you have to fully shut down yeah. in order for it to be successful. That's not true. And that's the, yeah, I think that might be one of the misconceptions I see about meditation mm -hmm. is that it's pushing away thought. It's like, oh, you gotta, you yes. gotta quiet the mind. Well, that's and what you're striving for. That's what you, of course. Yeah. But, As an athlete, you're striving to win. Yes. But if you don't win every game, it doesn't make you a failure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my other dad hobby is I'm trying to get into golf. Really? Golf, golf was something that I was always like, nah, I'm not gonna do golf. And like... I think after COVID and being inside so much, mm -hmm. like, then I'm like, I'm a dad. I had other dad friends who are going golfing. I'm like, oh, I might as well try it. Okay. And then once I got out there, I'm like, oh, I'm outside. It's so nice. hobby or like serious golf? hobby, 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 hobby for now. Okay. What's, Obviously, uh, it would be what so they say? cool. What's your to, handicap? Is that what they say? I don't even know. Okay. That's how much of a hobby it is. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. It's uh, there is no handicap. <laughs> okay, there's uh, did the, the ball go in? Great, cool. So you Let's take mulligans on. galore. That's yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Fine. So you, um, you yeah. make it a social activity. Yeah. You really set up your life to be quite healthy. I I feel really fortunate. I feel very lucky. I, I, you know, I just kind of like, I guess I try to just like go with the flow. I, I, I feel it's like I don't Buddhist feel like mentality. I did it on purpose, if that makes you sense. You found your way here. Yeah. Well, you've, I don't know if this is fortune or because of, your selection of who you came to for help. Yeah. First of all, applauding you for doing that because a lot of people Thanks. in dark times will not seek help. They'll actually isolate further. Yeah. So it's great. I've been, but I've been there. And I think we all I, have. Uh, yeah. And I think that realizing, like going through that and learning the lesson of, mm -hmm. of that, of isolating and, and, um, realizing that asking for help is like the greatest superpower ever. For sure. Um, especially in, in times like today, like there, we have so many resources, so it's like, mm -hmm. so, uh, available, the help is available. And because the help is so readily available, yeah, I think it actually leads people to not take the help or seek the help really because they're like, it's there. 
it's always the option. Yeah. It's almost like dating now with social media and all these apps. Yeah. That people are like, oh, if not this one out, there's another one. But yeah. when you're needing help. Even, I got lucky with that dude, too. Really? Okay. Not doing dating apps. So you you I, missed the whole dating app window. Is I, that why? Well, back like back when Tinder first came out. When did Tinder come out? I want to say like 2013 maybe. Yeah. You know. Sam knows. Um, <laughs> Sam, yeah. Sam crushes <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> I did like. Founding member. <laughs> like it came out. I think I just turned like 21 and I was like, you know, I'll, I'll try. I'll try this out. Um, I went on one Tinder date. The girl in the picture was the girl in real life. No, I was like, I was like success. Uh, you know, she wasn't the one, but we had a nice little date and I was like, cool. Did it not for me. The whole app experience or the date was not for you. Uh, she was great. Date date was fine. But just the, I think the experience of Mm -hmm. just like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through the computer to like Mm -hmm. find a, a match. Um, but again, very lucky that I didn't have to do that. I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh, well, I need to meet people. Yeah. This is the only way. Sure. Um, and then my wife and I met, we got set up through like uh, a friend. You guys didn't Tinder swipe each other? No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Um, but we knew. And your friend yeah. knew that you guys would be right for each other? Uh, I don't know if she knew, but but she, you know, um, she set us up. And and for for Megan and I, our first date, we just consider our anniversary oh. because like I knew as soon as she walked in that she was the one. Wow! And I'd never felt that before, and it was just like a whirlwind experience. I also like uh, looked pretty disheveled and like was in a you know really interesting place in my life where I was just like vibing out, pretty free, like had a beard and and uh, she walked in looking like a dime piece, and I was like. Oh, up. I, like, I fucked up this date. She is not. She's not gonna be into this. Before I was like gassing myself up, like if she can like me like this, she can like me in any way. And she walked in looking like a ten, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> so the whole date, I was just like, I can clean up. I promise. I'm so sorry. Just apologize the whole date, and she was like, yeah, just shave the beard. It hurts. Wow. Okay. And I was like, okay. Um, but she finally let me grow it out again. Wow. I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying. I like the beard. I think Thanks, man. You have a great beard. I'm jealous. Thanks. I have like a spotty one, so I have to. Yeah, I got awesome. lucky that it grows in okay. pretty full. See, now beard is my new hobby. Okay. Because there's like a whole like it's oil like a, thing. Yeah, it's like a club. I feel like I'm a part of a club now. And so other guys with beards are like, you know, you got a comb, right? You got a brush. I'm like, no, I have to br- I have to shampoo this. <laughs> like, okay. Wow, beard life. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I have a question about finding the one because yeah. you, you explain that in such a powerful way that it's not jealousy. Okay. But it's close. Okay. <laughs> You'll get there. Uh, no, but here's my concern. Okay. And you tell me if this is a correct concern that I should be having as a gentleman who is in the dating pool looking yeah. Yeah. and has yet to find the one. Okay. I feel if mm-hmm. I find the one of mm-hmm. what is right for me, mm-hmm. You had a similar panic attack where you're like, I wish I was wearing something different. Or yeah, different. yeah. But I feel like I would change because I'd be like, this does, this shouldn't exist. How did I meet this person? And I feel like I won't be able to be myself. I'm trying to figure out. How what do you, you fix happen. that? Fix what? Like, to just be like, this person's amazing, yeah. and I would do anything to be with this person. Yeah. But you shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't do anything. Like, if the person's being mean to you. Oh, 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 oh. Like, I would be well, susceptible that's... to be taking advantage of. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, well, I mean, it all, it all came from me. She wasn't like, hey, man, you don't look so good. <laughs> you better change this up. Well, she if said you... your beard was prickly. So we, clearly well, we there started, was some kissing happening We started happening kissing on the first on date, the first date <laughs> and then... Um, it was like a little, it was, she made a little joke, like, ow, you know? And oh, I was okay. like, sorry, I'll, I'll shave next time. Okay. You know, it, I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't trying, I just didn't shave. It's like, I didn't have time to shave and I was just like making up excuses. Like Got usually it. like for a date, I would, I would present myself in a cleaner way. And but you I, would still present yourself as yourself. Yeah. But see, I feel like I would struggle with that. Cause I would say like, I want to present my best self. Well, here's here's the difference is that, and um, this is kind of a tangent of a story, but uh, right before I, I met Megan for our date, because we accidentally met three years before our first date, 
which is a whole nother thing. Okay. That's another reason why it was like, I think this was meant to be like, we mm -hmm. call ourselves soulmates. Cause like the second time around still happened. We randomly met at a house party three years before our first date. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's like, she came up to me she was a spy kids fan. And she mm -hmm. came up to me and was like, Hey, are you spy kids? <laughs> and usually like around that time, if anyone had asked me if I was spy kids, I would say no and, and run away. And there's something about this girl with like these magnetic eyes that were like blue, green, like just something about this girl that I was like, that is definitely me. It is me. <laughs> and, um, and we like hung out a little bit and just talked a little bit. And then she went back to her friends at this house party and the whole rest of the night, she would just go, yo, spy kids. And I'd go, Megan. And all of her friends would be like, oh my God. And, um, and, and that was it. And that but was why the experience. Did it, why was there no continuation? Well, it was just like a, it was just like a, like serendipitous kind of like moment. You it were was, like, it's a beautiful moment. Let it be. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Your patience level is monk. Like I got to say, listen, man, when you're an actor and you're waiting for that phone to ring, you, <laughs> you have to just <laughs> okay. go, it might not ever ring okay. and that's okay. Wow. Okay. Just, I don't know. Uh, no, that you have the Buddhist mentality. Like that's, is it, is yeah. that the Buddhist well, mentality? Well, the Buddhist mentality is that nothing, uh, is ever going to be stay the same? That there's constant change. That there'll be bad times. Yeah, and this bad time may seem like the worst this time, but it will shall get pass. Better. Yeah, one of these <laughs> spiritual religious things. But that's the idea. Yeah, that the high is never going to be that high, and the low is never going to be that low. Yeah, unless you let it be. Right. Well, I mean, and that is like you know when you're in hard times, being in hard times in the moment, and I kind of just went through this. Mm -hmm. In the moment, it feels like it'll never go away. Of course. Um. But I've been fortunate enough to always come out on the other side and going through it a couple times. Now I can more quickly remind myself like, oh, that was a that was a lesson. What was the lesson that came from this? So like, um, wait, hold on. I don't want to go off on on helping you with what you need. <laughs> um, what I was going to say was that basically Megan brings out the best version of me. Mm. And that's what I was. I wasn't really open to that until like right before we went on this date. I, have you ever done a, a float tank, like a self-deprivation? Mm -hmm. A sensory deprivation. Sensor, self, <laughs> you said for self, yourself, because self that's what it was. It was self-deprivation. <laughs> I delved deep into myself. Um, Actually, I found a funny story about sensory deprivation tank, but go ahead. So I did it for the first time. It was two hours. In you did it together? No, no, no. Oh. Before I met Megan. Right before oh, I met Megan, okay. I did it for the first time two hours, pitch black. You saw colors and all that in your mind? Yeah, but I was also freaking the fuck out. I was really? also so scared. Why? Just because it was a scary experience. Like, mm -hmm. like having all the senses go mm -hmm. um, and like, I've, like never really having a psychedelic experience. Mm -hmm. it, it was just like, I have no control. Like it was, it was kind of like scary. I, I think I had started to have a bit of a panic attack. Wow. Okay. So to calm myself down, I just started talking out loud to myself. Mm -hmm. which I'm sure all the, I'm sure there were cameras in there and people were listening, but whatever I was, <laughs> it was calming me down. And so I just started talking about like what I, what I wanted. And I didn't know if I was like what manifestation was or like if I was doing that, but I just realized in that moment of panic that like I was ready to be in a relationship. And I think that's another like big thing of like, sometimes you're really okay with being alone and like, finding yourself because, um, you know, it's important. Of course. Um, and then there comes a time where, you, where you're ready to find someone. And I hadn't been in that place in a really long time. And in this moment of panic, I was like, no, I'm, I think I'm ready. And so I was like, I just want to find someone who's just like better than me in every way. Who's going to help <laughs> me be a better person and, okay. a, and a better man and like someone who's smarter than me and funnier than me and, and more talented and, and someone who will just make me better. Mm -hmm. And the next week I, I went on my first date with Megan and she is that. So is your advice that I should go in a float tank and repeat these mantras? Try it. Try it. Because I might. Try it. But be, I you mean, have to be, you, you kind of even have go, to there was no open. humility in your thing. You're like, I'm going to find someone better than me, <laughs> stronger than me. Didn't know it was going to happen, but then. <laughs> but that's great. That's but what then I, I found someone and she really, she really just, um, when you meet the one, at least for me, it just, it just feels different. Mm. It was like, 
um, first of all, like I made a new best friend Mm -hmm. and she's my best friend and, and we've almost been together for seven years and we've just like, we've never lost that spark of, of being each other's best friend. Um, and it like the right one is someone who will grow with you Mm -hmm. and, um, never make you feel like you, like you need to change. You're changing together. It's like a, you be, you just kind of become, you kind of become one person in a wow. weird way. Like obviously she has her interests and I have my interests and um, we spend some time apart, but we really don't, especially now that we're parents. Like yeah. um, it's so crazy to say out loud now that we're parents. Yeah. Um, you know, now we have our, our little one and our, our other one on the way and, um, it's fun to watch our little ones. You know, it's like some things that Riley does are totally me and some things that he does are totally Megan. And, um, yeah. So I guess my advice for you is it's just to, float to tank. huh? It's to float tank. Float tank. No, just it's, say it's to what be you ready. want. I want to be brunette. <laughs> I don't even know the answer to those things. And I yeah. don't think th- th- those things don't really matter. They don't. They really don't. Cause yes, like I would love someone with eyes that are striking and, height i don't know i don't even yeah, care no, no, I, just, no, no, no. I want the i want that feeling you, you want the feeling yeah it's a partner yeah i mean that you know it's really just like a partner in in life yeah that you're gonna find it's a it. superpower having that partner feels like it right because yeah. it's like things become less scary because you have i mean i basically never really felt unconditional love until i met megan Wow. And so if you if you've ever felt that, it's it's that, you know. My and dog. There you go. That can work. I don't want to compare my future partner to a dog, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I yeah. he doesn't judge me. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, and I don't I don't ever feel judged. And also I I yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just different. Okay. Well, I know my journey now. I need to be more open to it and feel like I'm ready. Yeah. But I think I'm ready. So but also, like, red flags are also a thing. Megan and I had this joke okay. when we started dating it. And we did it for for kind of years. Now that we're parents and we're married, we don't have to joke like this anymore. But we would go, like, still no red flags? We go, nope, still no wow. red flags. What What are your red flags? Uh, a lot of different a lot of different things. Uh, give I me mean, one. You, the give, red the red flag the red two. flags are something that you see in hindsight. You don't realize they're well, yeah, now, red flags. What do, you, what do you have now in hindsight? Uh, what are, what are red flags? I don't know. They don't matter to me anymore. Well, I only have what if one they relationship were to come up? that matters to me. They're not going to come up. How do you know? I know. I just know. Oh. She's the one. Okay. There's no red flags. Wow. But you just have to be honest with yourself. So I should find my are. red flags. I, I don't like people who are mean, but I mean, those are pretty obvious red flags. Yeah. That's okay. Like, I don't have any special red flags. We, we took a pivot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you were talking about your new wellness routine yeah what are you doing now that uh-huh. you think is healthy besides meditation um okay so well oh sorry before you do it i yeah. wanted to point out the science aspect because please this is a health podcast yeah <laughs> um of the, why meditation works so well uh even if you're not doing it quote unquote right okay whenever we force ourselves to do something as part of a routine mm-hmm. or something that's a little bit of a challenge and we get past it our brain naturally rewards us for doing that. Mm. So a lot of times when people seek motivation to start a gym routine or to start running or doing anything really, we anticipate motivation comes before the action. We say, we need to get motivated to go. Mm. And while that can work in some instances, the reality is you need the action first. Mm. And then the action starts feeding the neurotransmitters in your brain in order to get you to continue doing said action. Yeah. And usually that comes from seeing progress. Yeah. That's why like you'll hear Navy SEALs say, make your bed first thing in the morning. Right, right, right. Because the first thing you want to do in the morning, the last thing you want to do in the morning is make your bed because you're tired, you're sleepy. Mm. But if you do it and you see a clean bed, it's a little reward. It's a challenge. It's uh, checked off. A little dopamine kick. A little kick. Yeah. Start that process up. Yeah. Barbara Corcoran actually sat in your chair and said she hates working out. But if she puts her feet into the shoes in the morning, right Mm -hmm. where she has... Uh, near the bed, she will go work out. Mm -hmm. And she gets her little dopamine kick from the feet. So um, in your case, or in anyone's case, when they're talking about meditation, sitting down, 
just to do it, even yeah. if you don't do it right. Right. And you do it for the five minute or two minute timer. Like don't set yourself up for failure and say, right. I'm gonna meditate for one hour my first time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no a lot. need. It's a lot. <laughs> do something small, get it checked off. That's where the benefit comes from. Absolutely. So I think th that's a universal win for everyone. Mine so. for like what you're saying is is waking up at five. Okay. Um and I turn so I, I wake up with my Apple Watch. Okay. I, I have that's a, a that's a unique case. It's a yeah. Thanks. My wife got it for me. Do you, we have matching cases. Um, do, you, what, do you have one of those things that like uh, if you uh, tap, it, it tells the other person that like you're thinking of them? Um, there, honestly, we use the walkie talkie app. Oh, you do. Which okay. Is awesome. Um, so we don't even have to call. We just are like, hey. Well, that's true. Up? Spy kids form. Exactly. <laughs> it's weird. It's now a, like a reality. Yeah. It was just a prop before. Um, but, uh, no, so I wake up, yeah. so this is the alarm on my watch vibrates. So mm -hmm. I don't wake up Megan when I get up so in the kind. morning. Um, and I turn off snooze cause I, because like getting into the 5 AM wake up was tough. But like, if you don't have the snooze button, you have to like get up. Mm -hmm. And you have to separate eventually. from the bed as fast as possible. Yeah. So it's like when I get up. I've, you know, if I shoot up and get my clothes on first thing and don't like dwell in like, should I go back to bed or not? So like, that's my, that's my reward is like getting up, mm -hmm. um, not hitting snooze. And, uh, and then I go, I go downstairs and, um, I try to, to journal first to kind of like wake myself up, drink some water, uh, journal. And then after like 10, 15 minutes of journaling, then I go into my meditation um, do my meditation. And then after meditation, I try to do some breath work. So, mm. um, big Wim Hof guy, okay. love Wim Hof. Um, and that's kind of where it's like some mornings, like at, at the beginning, I'm like, I'm going to do four rounds of Wim Hof breathing every day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and some days I'm like, oh man, I can't do four. And so that's I just okay. don't, yeah. I just, I just do some days I just do one. Yeah. Some days I do two. Um, and then after that amount of time, then I just try to chill and do nothing for like five minutes um, because our lives are so, there's so much stimulation going on. And if I have the time, I also have the baby monitor like right next to me the entire time. So I'm checking on, on Riley to see if he's like getting up. And if he's still asleep, I just kind of allow myself to just kind of like get back in my body and, um, and do nothing because like... If I can get bored and, and do nothing, then everything else feels more fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go straight to the coffee machine. Okay. Make some coffee. There you go. Yeah. The, the new barista skills you've developed. Yeah. And then you said you were watching some TikTok videos that were giving you some optimization tips about your routine or wellness. Have you seen anything on social media that you then tried to do or um, as a form of inspo? Um, I, I mean, I recently just got into like cold immersion mm. therapy, okay. um, and like doing cold plunges and that's tough. Have you done that? I, I've cold plunged before. I've never yeah. done it as a routine though. So I'm like, I think I was doing it wrong in the beginning. Cause like I do it for like set, I would like, you know, go, how long can I be in here? Mm -hmm. And Again, like there's that kind of mind body disconnect where it's like I tell myself I'm going to do it for 10 minutes and at five minutes my I'm like hurting. <laughs> I was like, why would I hurt myself? Yeah. Um, and uh, my brother-in-law also does some cold immersion therapy, too. So we as soon as we find information and if we find conflicting information, we're always like constantly. We also live together. So we're sharing okay. it with each other constantly. So Dr. Andrew Huberman like had this thing come out saying like cold immersion therapy. You do it for 11 minutes a week. Is this the army study that came out from Europe that you're talking about? I don't know. It, oh, might, okay. it might be. Okay. I only know it from his TikTok. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I was doing like seven minutes at a time. I would put my earbuds in and I could like I could get through it for seven minutes with a couple songs um, but then I was getting out and I was running right to the hot shower and I was thawing off in the shower. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> my brother-in-law was like, no, bro, you gotta like get your body to get warm on its own. Like that's the purpose of it. And I was like, okay. So, um, I'm now like, I'm, I'm doing up to 11 minutes a week. It's kind of split up into like two sessions a week. Okay. Um, and I'm doing it for like five minutes 
at a time and letting my body warm up naturally. Okay. And I'm really seeing like benefits from, from doing that okay. and not just like, um, I thought in the beginning it was like, oh, no one wants to be in cold water. So I'm just doing something I don't want to do. And then that's going to make everything that I don't want to do throughout the week easier because that's I'm, partially true. Yeah. But now I'm actually like physically feeling the benefits okay. of like having more energy, um, just being more grounded and, and sure. connected. Yeah. I, um, I appreciate that you're having a lot of fun doing it and that it's helping you. Yeah. The thing that I want people to not have more anxiety over, because it's so easy to fuel anxiety when you see someone's regimen come out and they're like, this sure. is how I do it, but yeah. this is how I do it. There was this one study done. Yeah. And if you really look at the research that they're quoting, yeah. a lot of times it's really poorly designed stuff. Yeah. That like No, that's why I need help. Well, no, that's <laughs> the thing. You actually don't need help. Okay. <laughs> so I'm one of those doctors in the school of thought that aims to have my patients become less rely like relying less upon on me. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to educate them with what we know and how we make our decisions so they can make the decisions for themselves. Okay. So I even do some manipulation stuff uh, because I'm an osteopathic physician. Mm -hmm. And even then some patients want to come back every two weeks for manipulation. I'm like, you don't need it. Here's here's what I am doing and why I'm doing it. Now you can do it yourself. Yeah. So because I also don't financially benefit from this right? because I'm in a community health center. So I'm like, you don't need to come see me. Whereas some practitioners will be like, oh no, you should come see me every week. You mm -hmm. need this. This mm -hmm. is beneficial for you. Oh, that's awesome. So that's really, I'm lucky to be in that position. But what I was going to say is all the numbers yeah. that you're hearing yeah. in this world, yeah. they're not true. right? So we get obsessed with numbers and science and statistics mm -hmm. where you've heard the 10,000 steps a day thing. Right. So arbitrary really yeah because if you walk nine thousand steps do you think yeah. you're going to become unhealthy yeah no it's just for the study that's what yeah. we did and that's what happened to have happened and it doesn't matter if you do nine thousand fourteen thousand twelve thousand mm -hmm. what works for you is what the answer is going to be and works for you is going to be different on any given day yeah because some days riley's well, not you're, sleeping you're well. getting you're getting into that obsessed yes. category yeah. again I and see. it's it's not your fault per se because that's how those gurus talk about it yeah like i uh, you know andrew huberman such a smart person like sharing the intricacies of how the mind body works i even learn a lot listening to it yeah but i can easily tell that he is a researcher right not a clinician right because if i talk to my patients in the way that he talks about it publicly yeah i will create the most anxious troubled patients mm -hmm. and it's not beneficial in the long term got it Simply because of the anxiety that's being fueled on it. Yeah. So I try and preach more of a, we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the things that we do know, like, yeah, cold immersion is great. And if it's giving you benefit and you yeah. enjoy doing it and it's a routine that you have that you're sharing with a loved one. Yeah. Amazing. I will yeah. never tell you to stop. Right. Right. But if it starts fueling anxiety in you that if you don't do it, you Stress can't Stress kills. Yeah. Yeah. I that's proven. That's proven. Yeah. Wow. Kind of boring awesome. though, right? Of a message. No, 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 not at all. Because it's like, you can't make sexy content around, hey, don't stress. There's a, well, you'll find a way. Yeah. You know, I've written prescriptions for busy single moms to go take a walk for 15 minutes. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I thought you were going to give me something else. And I'm like, no, this is what you need. <laughs> this is not what I need, yeah. okay? Um, and no. I know it sounds like almost borderline no. douchey as a doctor. Oh, you wrote me a prescription for a walk. No, 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 but it's, that's what you need. Megan and I do that all the time. Whenever things get kind of like too hectic, we take our son for a walk and we go like walk around our neighborhood and we kind of call it our therapy session. Like, mm. cause it's just the three of us and we just check in with each other. And, um, and, and Megan works a lot more than I do. And she, and she is a busy, busy woman and somehow she finds time to do it all. Um, and like, I feel like my job is to is to help her make sure that she's okay, and so I'm always the one to be like, "Hey, let's like take a let's take a break. Like you can you can have a break. Like let's take a break. Let's mm -hmm. all just kind of like be together and and just be and just connect." Speaking of connecting with family, Daryl and Megan connected with TikTok star Chris Olson a few years ago, and now consider him family. How does Chris fit into your guys' lives? Because Chris, Chris Olsen, he's was, our long lost, uh, our long lost brother. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah. Um, yeah, he uh, he comes with a perfect level of mayhem. 
That's how I would describe him. I don't know. He's a big mystery to me, that guy. Really? I feel like he's hiding a lot of shit. No. Really? I, would, no, I, I want to know. Um, no. He, um, he is a person I admire so much because he... It's weird because he's such a presence on social media. Mm-hmm. But, like, who he is on the apps is kind of who he is in, in person. Yeah. There's no, like, disconnect. It's not like you meet when you meet him in person and it's been fun to just hang out with him more and more because he gets recognized a lot Mm -hmm. and he's so kind to everyone. And, um, I think he's just like, it's really cool how vulnerable he is and how much of his life he shares with the world and how transparent he is. And, um, I just, I admire that. Like, um, especially in these times of social media, it's like, you don't know like what to believe. And, and he is, he's kind of just like the real deal. Mm -hmm. And basically we met him because he, Megan was like a fan of his online. And I think like he reached out to her and she saw it or she reached out to him. It was somebody, I think maybe he reached out once and then she didn't see it. And then she reached out to him and then they instantly started talking and, um, and then he came over to our house and he did, um, he did my wife's podcast um called working on it it's awesome check it out um and it was like um it's almost like when megan and i went on our first date it was like we've they knew each other forever but they had just met for the first time wow and uh, he really just kind of like fit into our family and all the tiktok stuff like doesn't feel like oh god do tiktok stuff like we're really just like having fun f- having fun around at home like it's like a creative outlet you're yeah. like, what, what fun thing can we do today? We're, we laugh so much. I don't I've think I've ever your, laughed more. I've seen your reels uh, like acting like Chris. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Those are hilarious. Yeah, I, did so one, on I did one acting like my wife <laughs> and people seem to really like that. And In the bed gonna, with the pillows. Huh? <laughs> In the bed with the pillows. There was one before that one. That was acting like my pregnant wife. Oh, okay. This one was just acting like my wife in general, just okay. every, everyday stuff. Um, and then, yeah. And then I did the pregnant wife one when we were in Australia a couple months ago, um, which like, you know, if anyone's going to do it, just do it with your partner. Don't just like go rogue and be like, I'm going to act like, oh, check this out, babe. <laughs> like, no, you need them there. Cause when I did the first one, I was doing it and Megan would be like, I'm not like that. I'm like, no, oh. sweetie, you are not. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. And then we did acting like Chris and I did acting like my son and. Just like act, I like acting. Just fun. It makes sense. Yeah. Did you uh, and Chris ever bond over? I know you have a very strong support for your sobriety. Yeah. He also talked about that. Uh, yeah. On our conversation, mm-hmm. did you guys ever? We had a moment over? actually where he helped me out a lot. It was um, a couple months into my sobriety, which I had been sober from alcohol for like a year and a half mm-hmm. at a certain point, and. Um, and then decided, but but I was still smoking uh, marijuana when I was free from alcohol. And then at a point decided like, oh, you know, I'm just going to try to be a, a wine guy. And that didn't work out so well. Like nothing bad happened or anything, but I was really aware of like the kind of like little voice in my head that was like. Craving it? Yeah. yeah. Or just like the addictive. I know their addiction runs in my family. And it was just like this unsettling feeling of just like constantly like thinking about it. Mm. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to think about this. And so, um, when I went sober again, I decided, and I've talked about this before that like nothing bad ever happened with, with weed either, but I decided like, Hey, I, I think I still have that little voice even with weed. Like when I wasn't drinking, I still thought about weed way more than I wanted to. Um, and so I decided to just go sober off of, of weed as, as well. And it was like a couple months into my sobriety from alcohol and and weed that, um, I was out at an event. Um, Megan was performing at an event and Chris came with us and I just felt like really uncomfortable because like usually, um, you know, like for me, I would think like, oh, after this event's over, like maybe, you know, I'll get a little stoned and, you know, and go to bed or, um, and so I was like just feeling really uncomfortable and like awkward. 
and Chris picked up on it immediately. Wow. And and because we were sitting next to each other, and I think I was just like looking around and just like uncomfortable. And he was like, "Hey, <laughs> it's it's okay. Just be uncomfortable. It's fine. I'm here. I know. I know how you feel. I've been through that. And I think that's that. Like it really like calmed me down. And and um, so nice to hear that someone had been through that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that it would that it would be okay. And and again, like just to allow myself to be uncomfortable." Mm-hmm. It was like, I didn't know I was uncomfortable. Like I knew, but I couldn't really control it. And then once he kind of called me out, I kind of just like took a breath and was like, oh, okay. And now I have like more of a curiosity. Now that there's been some time, I'm just more curious, I guess. About what? Just about being present, Hmm. about the present moment and like feeling the feelings, allowing the feelings to come and, and then like watching them go. So how do you explore that? Uh, practice, like just practice feeling emotions, putting yourself outside your comfort zone, doing new things. Like what's, um, that's a good, that's a good question. How do I practice that? I kind of just, uh, surrender to the, to the moment, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and w- you know, with Chris's help, just that one little experience, if I'm uncomfortable now, I being called out for being uncomfortable, I can notice like, Oh, there's the uncomfortable feeling again. And I've gotten through it so I can get through it again and you just kind of ride it out. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. Um, you, um, yeah. you mentioned that the reason why you felt weed was quote unquote, maybe addictive to you yeah. was because of that voice kind of coming back and thinking about it and spending a lot of time thinking mm-hmm. about it. I feel like the newer generations, and I say that as if I'm like 60 years old, <laughs> um, these young kids <laughs> yeah, these exactly. days yeah, think that because marijuana on face value is less inherently dangerous short term compared yeah. to alcohol. Yeah. They think it's safe. And as a doctor, I have to explain that that's not true. Mm-hmm. Was there something that you saw when you were using marijuana excessively that you felt that there was health consequences for doing that? It never got to that point. Um, which is why I like in my head, it was a lot harder to give up Yeah, because it, um, it was always a good time. Mm. It was all, and I and I never felt like I was using it excessively. Sure, um, which was another reason why it was hard to give up. Because yeah. like with alcohol, you know, you you have some experiences. I had my first hangover as a dad, and that's when I was like, I will never feel this way again. Mm. I will never allow myself to feel this way again. And um, I, I just felt so low, and so and that's when I was just like, you know what, like screw it. I'm just going to stop smoking as well because I just, I want to be the best version of myself. And even though I feel like I haven't gotten, and maybe I did, but even though I felt like I hadn't gotten to it, using it ex- excessively, mm-hmm. I didn't want to find out mm, what that, would what be that like. looked like. Got it. Um, I just like wanted to, I was really curious to see how I would feel taking a break, taking like, and how did you feel? I mean, now I, like, I can't believe, you know, that I, I did it as much as I did. Like now, now I can see it. I probably was using it excessively. But what difference do you see specifically? What's better? Clarity. Clarity. There's a lot more clarity. And also like kind of this might sound silly, but like being an actor and like wanting to be present all the time. Now it seems so simple be like, oh yeah, why would I smoke weed? That that is kind of dulling my emotions and dulling my feelings. And you know, um, I say I have a lot more clarity now because I just um, I'm not like using a substance to feel a certain way. I think that's powerful because yeah. blunting of emotion is why I feel a lot of people end up using marijuana, mm-hmm. and it's almost like a self medication of sorts. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned it very accurately, the insidious nature of the harm that comes from marijuana is what makes it dangerous. Mm -hmm. So alcohol, you over drink, you get sick. Yeah. Everyone notices it. You smell like alcohol, you throw up all these things, Mm -hmm. but with marijuana, it's different. You smoke too much. People will laugh. It's like a silly thing. Yeah, that was. The, so I was bad. just always like a goofy goober. Yeah, and, and no everyone had a great time, and exactly. and it was all good. I'm gonna make a really nerdy scientific <laughs> comparison here. Okay. Why 
COVID-19 mm-hmm. was so much more deadly mm-hmm. than if you look at the original SARS virus mm-hmm. was because it was less deadly. Hmm. Isn't that a weird sentence? Yeah, I'm like trying to process what you just said. And I'll said. explain what that means. Yeah. SARS-CoV-2, which yeah. is the virus that causes COVID-19. Right. Because it was less deadly, meaning more people got it. Yeah. Some people had no symptoms at all, mm-hmm. therefore were asymptomatically spreading it to the world right. and not knowing. Right. Means it impacted so m- many more people. And those mm, people got impacted by the hundreds of millions. Mm-hmm. So then the death rate was low, but because it impacted so many people, it was actually way more problematic yeah. than the original SARS virus because when that got people sick, they right. got really sick. Right. A lot of them lost their lives because it had a high fatality rate. Yeah. But we were isolating them and that's it. We controlled the virus. Yeah. So because this is not as bad, right. it became more bad. Yeah. And I feel like marijuana is kind of an example of that where it's, oh, look, it's the goofy guy. It's not right. such a big thing. Right. But on a societal level, yeah. it can become way worse. Yeah. I don't know. Do you agree with me on uh, that, my take on that? Yeah. I mean, I think okay, you vaping know, every, falls into this category for me as well. Vaping is terrible. <laughs> okay. Vaping is so bad. But it's so bad because it's not as bad as cigarettes. Right. Right. So it's weird because you're thinking risk reduction. Right. And yes, if I'm getting someone who's you know a two pack per day smoker and I'm right. getting into vaping, right. good place to be. Yeah. But the majority of things that are happening is you're like, oh, I'll just vape because it's not as bad as cigarettes. And then you end up on cigarettes. Well, I mean, and I'm, again, like, I think timing is everything and, uh, and becoming a dad, um, really put a lot into perspective for me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, years before when I, when I didn't have the responsibilities that I had, you know, it was like, oh, what are the lesser of the two evils? Yep. And I think like that first time when I went sober off of alcohol, I was like, well, alcohol is worse for me than, than weed is. So I can... I can do weed and I'll just do more CBD than THC and stop drinking and then I'll be good. And this time was like, you know, because I, I want to be the best dad, I want to be the best husband. Um, and I, I want to, you know, like be a good role model for my son. I want to show him that you can, you know, you can feel your feelings without, without, Fear. you know, you don't need to, don't need to do anything to i don't know to hide the feelings no yeah. that's true yeah because we all have that inherent fear of our feelings mm-hmm. you're not just a role model for riley either for i'm sure people listening myself i mean i'm inspired to take better care of my Thanks, health man. and uh and to uh, find the one hopefully for myself you're gonna find the one just when you when you're ready okay i i it was like weird it was like i was finally in this place where i was like really ready and then i just like hit the jackpot. Oh, do you have any medical questions that you're curious oh, about? Oh, well, we were going to talk about my earwax. Oh, yeah. Tell me about your earwax. I've got a Sam lot of earwax. Me. Okay, two things. A lot of earwax, and I get a lot of complaints from only my wife. I ask other people, does my breath smell bad? But it's mostly just my wife who's like, man, your breath. And I'm always, I have my Listerine spray in my pocket. Okay. So how do I fix my breath? Okay. Someone once mentioned like tonsil stones. Mm-hmm. Maybe I have those. And then I have a lot of earwax. Uh, Q-tips are bad, right? Should stop using Q-tips? Yeah. Okay. What do I do? Let's start with the ears because that's the easier one of the two. Okay. Um, I'll give you the breakdown. Mm -hmm. Earwax naturally should come out of your ears Mm -hmm. because the way our ear canals are shaped is it naturally... As we shower, as we go through our day, the earwax sort of starts melting from body heat and starts coming out on its own. Okay. That's why Q-tips essentially are not a bad product as long as you use them on the outside where the earwax is coming out. Okay. So you're cleaning out the exterior portion. Oh, okay. It's only when you start sticking them in your ear that becomes a problem. And that's where it feels good. Right. But the problem is it feels good because you're itching a damaged ear canal. Mm. So it's like, you know, when a scab is healing and you're picking at Mm -hmm. it because it's itchy, Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with the Q-tip. So you're like fostering a very unhealthy ear environment, if you will. I'm like telling my ears like, hey, you should make more wax. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And then because the Q-tip is not a scooper, right? it's pushing the earwax deeper in. in, And that makes it harder for me as a doctor to take it out. Okay. Now for patients that let's say are having recurrent earwax problems because their shape of their ear canals is off. Uh-huh. I, actually, in my elderly patients that are a little bit dehydrated, aren't drinking as much, they'll get really bad ones. Okay. 
if it's already there, I use a product called Debrox Eardrops. It's mm-hmm. basically a hydrogen peroxide based product that facilitates the softening of the earwax so it melts and then comes out on its own. Mm. If you're a person who regularly just happens to get them mm-hmm. and you want to do something preventive, mm-hmm. we recommend mineral, mineral oil. Okay. And that mineral oil just helps the the decrease of that production and helps them feel less itchy so that okay, you cool. are less likely to dig around. And I do not recommend any of the people at home getting those ear cameras that they sell on Amazon or scoopers. Yeah, TikTok made me buy something strange, and luckily yeah. the box came damaged, and I'm like, this is a sign I shouldn't use Thank this. God. Yeah. We actually, I have a video called TikTok Scam Medical Products, and yeah. that was on the list. Okay, great. So I'm glad you threw Didn't that Didn't use away. it. Okay, no. Good. But now let's talk about your... My breath. Breath, yeah. yeah. Um, breath has multiple potential sources. Okay. Um, teeth and gums are one of them, mm-hmm. and sometimes it has nothing to even do about the quality of your hygiene. Like you could be flossing, you could do Dude, brushing. I do your it teeth, all. I it brush doesn't my matter. Teeth, mouthwash, because tongue scrape. Also, it doesn't sound like you have a lot of stress because you manage it quite well. But stress can I have be plenty of stress. <laughs> but I mean, when I say stress, not all stress is bad stress. Right. Stress is good. Necessary. We need stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's how you manage it, and it sounds okay. like you manage it quite well. Trying. <laughs> but poorly managed stress can actually manifest itself as gingivitis. Okay. And that can cause some problems. Okay. Um, tonsil stones are certainly one of them. Basically, within our tonsils, we have something known as tonsillar crypts, which are basically like little tunnels that end up going through our tonsils. And therefore, any bacteria that we're exposed to, even if it doesn't infect us and cause a tonsillitis, mm-hmm. Our body can have a reaction to it, and it creates like a pussy, smelly pocket, okay. which ends up being a tonsillith, which is a tonsil stone okay. that can be extracted. Okay. Sometimes patients even get salivary gland stones. Those are usually more painful and more obvious that are happening. Uh-huh. And for those patients, we recommend putting a sucker in, and like a lemon sucker, and it actually stimulates the salivary glands to produce more saliva and cool. clear the blockage. Cool. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, Something lesser known that yeah. causes bad breath is acid reflux. Mm. More specifically, something known as laryngopharyngeal reflux, LPR. Mouthful, but actually a very simple thing. Laryngo, meaning larynx, which mm-hmm. is your voice box. Mm-hmm. Pharyngeal, meaning pharynx, which is your throat. Mm-hmm. Reflux, meaning the acid comes up. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about LPR and why it's different than traditional heartburn is it's silent heartburn. Because in order to create heartburn symptoms here, you need a great deal of acid to bother your esophagus. Like a bunch of coffee in the morning? A bunch of coffee in the morning, <laughs> laying down right after eating a big meal. Okay. Um, or just having an incompetent sphincter that closes um, the stomach or having a hiatal hernia where the sphincter kind of loses itself and floats up into your body. Uh-huh. Um, but you need a decent amount of acid. Versus here for LPR, mm-hmm. a small amount of acid can get up here, not cause heartburn symptoms, right. and then cause like mucus in the back of your throat. Mm a hoarse voice, chronic cough that's not really coming from your lungs, bad breath. Okay. I Ever have that? I have that. No. Okay. No. That's good. Um, but, and no symptoms of heartburn. No. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Where, is it, where is it coming from? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe tonsils, I have a tonsil yeah. tonsil zone. Yeah. Or cavities. Have you? No, no have cavities. You no. Then that's unusual because there, there is the official medical diagnosis of halitosis, but those are usually my top, few things on differential your go-tos yeah that okay. i start investigating and then if it's not i'm not getting a clear answer and the dentist can't give me a clear answer I, maybe my wife just doesn't like the way my breath smells maybe it's just the specific maybe scent i don't know you guys are <laughs> you're you're one we're one so i doubt that that's that. yeah i wouldn't put that high up on my differential okay, good. Like that. <laughs> but i'm sorry i can't solve that for that's you. okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So instead of the lightning round, we have a check your reflexes round. Okay. Very medical. What's the healthiest part of your body? My eyes. Perfect vision? Mm-hmm. Wow. Did you eat a lot of carrots when you were young? I think I just got lucky. No. <laughs> but yeah, carrots <laughs> carrot, are good too. Yeah, I mean, beta carrots. Yeah. That, that's overstated. It's a rabbit thing. <laughs> um, what's something that raised your blood pressure this week? I got you angry. Tur- turbulence. It, that, it didn't get me angry. Just like got you nervous. Was scary, yeah. Mm. It was like we were told there was gonna be turbulence. We we're kind of in a little bit of a rainstorm, and as soon as I lifted up my my window lightning. shade, lightning, yeah. And I was like, oh man. And like we were, uh, I was, yeah. Do you have a fear of flying in general? I don't. What What was weird this time around is like as a kid, I had a fear of flying over water. Mm-hmm. 
Um, because I, I think Castaway had just come out, and I was really f- terrified <laughs> of Castaway happening in real life. But for some reason, when I looked on the little map, we were over water, and for some reason, it brought me peace of like, well, then we can just do a water landing. Wow. And like, you clearly know, didn't see the Malaysian Airlines documentary on Netflix. I haven't yet. No, don't watch it. No, <laughs> I won't. Because they were over water too. In that yeah, thing. but anyway, that that was scary. Okay, uh, there's not on the list. What's your favorite movie of all time? That's that is a loaded question. Uh, that's the point. Um, this is a yeah. very heavy, heavy. <laughs> I I think one that's uh, just a go to is Boogie Nights. Mm, I haven't seen it. What? Sell it to me. Uh, well, uh, so I grew up in Torrance, California. Mark Wahlberg's character, you've no Boogie Nights. Mark Wahlberg's character is from Torrance, so there's like a little bit. Also, Paul Thomas Anderson, all of his movies, this was his first feature film. All of his movies take place in LA, most of them, not mm-hmm. all of them. Um, so he just ha- he captures like, uh, basically like the where essence. I'm from, okay. the essence. He captures the essence so uh-huh. well. Um, but that movie, it's really long. What's it about? Uh, what is it about? Uh, it's about <laughs> it's about the rise and fall of um, and potential rise again of a movie star. Mm, putting yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, putting it on the list. I want to uh, go in blind. Don't look anything up. Just okay. I'm but also blind date the movie. Also, if you like film, I love film. this. This movie is shot on film. Um, it's like 1997, I think, but there is one shot in the middle of the movie that is like, if it's like a 10 minute shot, one shot, the wow. camera, the camera follows this one character and it, what, what's awesome about the movie that I love so much mm-hmm. is that it kind of feels like a play. Like they, so many things had to go right to get that, to get scene. this one shot. So many people had to like be in place and wow. like everything just had to fit perfectly to get this one shot. And the Spy Kids movies started on film. So knowing what that's like to like make sure that the kind of like excitement that you get to make sure that it all gets right in one take. It's a lot of pressure. Then versus now you can just chop it up and make it look like one shot. So okay. anyway, Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is serious. Okay. Got it. This is, this is the deep question. Loaded okay. question. Right. Agent Cortez. Yes. We're sending you on a top secret mission. Mm-hmm. It will require you to perform incredible physical feats, execute cunning phys- psychological strategy, and push you beyond your limits. As such, we are prepared to replace one part of your body with a super-powered cyber version. Which mm. part are you replacing and why? My biceps. Why? Because I need bigger biceps, <laughs> man. I got I to gotta do more pull-ups. You know, I want those guns. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, so you, I could, so I, you I, want know. guns that will walk through a metal detector. Get it? Sure. Got it. I got it. Yeah, I just want to be, yeah, stronger, you know? Okay. Um, which I know I just have to lift heavier things, but um, but yeah, for Agent Cortez, okay. bigger biceps. Bigger biceps. Have you ever almost died? Um have I? There was one I think it was just like, you know, when you have a panic attack or you're in panic you just feel like you're gonna die yeah, i don't know doom is like, yeah i don't know if i almost no near died. fatal accidents or um actually there was uh, i talked about this as a kid um but there was one scene and you, i guess you can go back now there's one scene in spy kids 2 we were filming like in some location in texas um and I was on the edge of a rock. It's like near the middle, three quarters of the way into the movie where I'm fighting off skeletons with a sword. I'm on the edge of this rock and it's like 700 feet above like the Rio Grande or something. I, I was high up mm-hmm. and they harnessed me into this rock because they didn't want me to fall, which was Makes sense. made me feel safe. Mm-hmm. Um, so fighting pretend skeletons and there was like a two ton crane on the set that was going to be used later in the day. They were going to take one of the actors and like swing them around and get a shot of them like swinging around mm-hmm. this beautiful landscape. And um, in the middle of the shot, the crane just started to tip and and like fell on its side. And 
Luckily, no one got hurt. The guy who's in the crane, like some superhuman strength happened and he just leaped out and like landed on both feet. I don't even think he had like a sprained ankle or anything. Wow. But the crane fell on its side. And when it fell on its side, everything was just like shaken. Mm-hmm. And it was like the only time this has ever really happened to me. But I was, I was nine and it felt like when the crane started to tip, everything just went into slow motion. And I could just, like, see people being like, get out of the way, get out of the way, move, move. And then it fell, and everything started shaking. And in that moment, I, I like, looked down, and I was like, I'm attached to this rock. If this rock goes down, like, I'm going down with this rock. Um, And luckily, that didn't happen, and everything stopped, and someone ran immediately out and, like, got me out of the harness and got me out of there. Um, But, yeah. I think now I know why you're afraid of turbulence. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. You just, you just <laughs> solved it for me. No, now I'm afraid of turbulence because I'm like, I got a son at home. Not like, sure. yeah, I got another of one course. on the way. Like, we yeah. got to make it through this flight. Well, but yeah, that was my well, closest. We're happy experience. you made it. And I thank, thank you. you for coming and sharing all your insight. Thanks for having a me. lot of insight, man. Thank you. Seriously. Oh, thank you. Daryl gave up on biohacking, but here's actually evidence-based ways to make natural remedies work for you. Click here to enjoy that. And as always, stay happy and healthy.